Well, hello everyone, it's yours truly, Troy, again back with another video. Now this one is going to be a little bit more serious. All healthcare is serious, but today I want to talk a little bit about uh, some things that have been in the news. We've had someone who was well known to which who committed suicide, and we've had this happen uh, many times with many celebrities and people, you know, some of you may have family members and loved ones, and so it's something that we have to keep talking about. I myself have a history in elementary and middle school um, of suicidal ideation myself and even attempts to take my own life at certain times. It's a very, very serious thing. I was going to do this video about after Happily Ever, after being on the show and reality TV. One thing that's not talked about nearly enough is how many people actually the statistics on suicide after being on things like reality television. Look it up. You'd be surprised at how many people have taken their lives because you've got things out there like cyberbullying and, you know, and all sorts of things that can cause a person to feel like they need to give up or they can't live uh, this life anymore. So uh, I was going to do that video and kind of talk about that. I'm not going to go into a lot of details of everything that happened behind the scenes while we were filming the show, but there were some things that did make me emotional. There were some things, you know, that um, as a person who has, has had struggles with suicidal thoughts, suicidal ideation, and, and, and attempts and all of that. I'm very, very sensitive to that kind of a thing, especially when it comes to children and kids being bullied. I have a really, really um, special place in my heart for those children. A lot of times people who are going through that, and I can speak in first person because I went through it myself with thoughts of suicide and really contemplating and thinking of that. A lot of times what's going through your head is that the way your life is right now, you know, the problems are just kind of insurmountable. And you can only think, it's almost like you can only think um, in just this one space and time, how everything seems to be collapsing. Nothing is going right for you. You feel down and you feel like your only answer is to leave this world. I understand a person being there and being someone who looks <laughs> like me. Uh, what do I mean by that? Being an African-American man. We don't, as a people, I don't think that we offer an environment that allows vulnerability, especially among African-American men, without some level of ridicule or condemnation or shots at their masculinity. So a lot of times we grow up from boys to men thinking that, no, you don't express your feelings. You don't tell people when you're sad. Toughen up. You got to be a man. Don't be sissified. You're sissified. You know, like he said, like he said on Friday. But we grow up thinking that those things are not um, something that a man would do, expressing yourself and telling someone that you're sad or you're down or you're feeling depressed or you're feeling anxious or feel fearful. You should just suck all of that up and you shouldn't cry and you should never show emotion and we grow up thinking that that's the way we're supposed to be so even when we're going through something internally we don't feel that we can ever share that and it, you know in, in, in reality we really can't a lot of times because the ladies in our life are also taught that this is the way a man should be he should not be crying he should not appear weak he should not be vulnerable you know that's not a manly thing to do so we don't generally have an outlet for that so my heart is always out for people who are in that space because we do need those kinds of relationships in our lives where we can be human and we can be vulnerable like Life is better done together with other people. Even in the beginning when God created uh, Adam and Eve, he said, it's, you know, Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. And so we need each other. We need that space to be able to rely on each other um, and lean on somebody without judgment. For somebody to tell us that it's okay for you to feel sad, sir. Young man, it's okay for you to be down. It's okay for you to be sad and not know why and not know why. Sometimes you don't always know why. And that's the tricky thing about dealing with mental issues um, is, is sometimes you, you don't know the root cause of them. And sometimes it could just be physiological things that are going on. But all of it deserves pause and for us to be able to stop for a moment and check on people and try to let's figure this out together because suicide is forever it's permanent you know sometimes we're in a moment and we're in a depressing season in our lives and we end up making a life-changing lifelong decision in a very temporary moment and that's not the best space to be in what other signs to look for if you've never experienced this and you you, you don't know what it's like to be suicidal um do you know what to look for if one of your friends are there are many things that people do when they are suicidal and when they they, they developed a plan and they know how they're going to do it and they set a time and they know what they, they, there's some there's some some signs that you can that you can look for in your friend and if you see something say something to somebody don't push them you know don't criticize them don't ridicule them because they're probably in that state because they feel that way already so don't do those things but do your best to try to get your loved ones some help so what are some things that put a person at higher risk if a person has attempted suicide in the past that puts them at high risk if a person has a mental health condition like depression anxiety uh schizophrenia or, or any of those things that puts them at higher risk for committing suicide if a person lives within a culture where it's not it's not a normal thing or it's not considered to be a strong thing to admit that you have some mental issues everything is hush hush that puts a person at a higher risk for suicide because they're not likely to share that with anybody so now what are some common suicide warning signs you know that you may observe in somebody that you know somebody that you love what, what, could, what could you look for to be able to recognize that hey there's something going on with my friend my loved one if your friend suddenly becomes very very calm and you know that normally this is not their usual behavior they're never this calm that could be a sign that something has changed with them if your normally outgoing friend all of a sudden becomes withdrawn and they don't want to go anywhere they don't want to be around anybody and that's not their usual you know extroverted type of personality keep your eye on them a big change in their personality or their appearance you know just all of a sudden they start dressing different and looking different and acting like a totally different person you got to watch out for that 
have, having behaviors that are unsafe or self-harming. You know, you're noticing cuts on their arms or, you know, they're binge drinking to the point where they could poison themselves or taking, you know, large amounts of pills and things like that. Keep your eye out on your friend. If you notice that your friend starts to make preparations, you know, like they start to give away their stuff or they start selling things and asking you to be, you want to have things that you know they hold dear or things that are very, very expensive, like they're okay with not having any of these things anymore, that could be a warning sign that they may have a plan to do something at some point. So keep your eye on your friend. So I said all of this to say, you cannot look at a person's exterior and know what they're dealing with on the inside. It's impossible to do. That's why people are so shocked a lot of times when someone does commit suicide, because it's usually a person that everybody is saying, I never thought that they would do that. So what can we do? We can practice love, walking in love. And you never know, a person might just be on the edge and all they needed to do was hear one more negative thing from you, a stranger, or have one more day of just nobody seeming to care about them or telling them that, you, that, that they are loved. You just never know where people are. So give a kind word. Check on your strong friends. Wrap your arms around some people that are in your life and tell them you love them. If you're at work, sometimes just pat on the back and say, you know what? I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you, I work with you. I think you're a wonderful person. Compliment somebody today. Tell somebody something good about themselves. Tell those that are close to you today that you love them and that you couldn't imagine your life without them. You'd be surprised at what a kind word can do for someone. I'll tell this little story and then I'm done. When I was in high school uh, in Houston, Texas, I w was in theater and I had an understudy and he was a young man that he wasn't very fashionable. He was really kind of skinny and scrawny, wore really big thick glasses. But one thing I noticed about him is that every time I talked to him, he seemed to be just so mean and harsh and brash with everybody. I could tell that, you know, I know now what it is, but he had this where he, his lip had been sutured. So he was born with a cleft lip and palate. And you can look that up to see what that is, but that's the way he was born and it was, re it was repaired. So he had this scar on his lip. And I remember asking him one day, man, why are you always so mean? And, and I mean, why do you always seem so mean to everybody? And he looked back at me and he said, because everybody's mean to me. And so that was a defense mechanism for him. Looking at him externally and watching how he act, you would think, oh, he's just a mean person. No. So I left uh, that school before we did the play. And he actually ended up playing my part because I moved, I moved away. But then when I came back to visit, I saw some of those same people, some of the cast members that were in the play in the mall. I was walking in the mall and I asked him, I said, well, how did the gentleman do? How did the young man do? Did he do the role? He was like, yeah, he did. And he did a great job. And I thought, okay, great, great. And he said, you didn't hear about him? I said, no, hear what? He said, he killed himself. You never know how people are hurting, no matter how they're acting on the outside. You don't know what they're going through on the inside. And I, to this day, wish that I had said something more kind to him. Would it have stopped him from taking his life? I don't know that. But it's something that I think about. And I won't ever forget. And I carry that with me. So today, going forward into 2023, Let's see if we could practice just being kind and telling people, listen, I care about you. You matter. You're needed. This load may be hard for you, may be rough for you. Lean on me. Be vulnerable with me. I won't judge you. Yeah, that's what we need. All right, listen, I love you guys. I'm going to start by saying it. I'm going to say it myself before I get off. I love you all. I love you. And if you're going through something and you're experiencing those thoughts and you really feel like you're at the end of your rope, I want you to know that you are loved. You really are. And that there is help out there available for you. Don't carry the load by yourself. If you're feeling like you're going to take your life and you're having thoughts of suicide, you can text the number 988 and there's some resources there for you. There's a website also that you could go to. It's SPRC, Suicide Prevention Resource Center, SPRC.org. And there's so many resources there. Your life is too valuable. Life is too, there's too much in you to leave us that way. Love on your people today. All right.